this day in Philly Sports History for July 16th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of the podcast. It is Tuesday. Time for a little motivation slash positivity. And in light of the current world and United States situation, I figured this was kind of appropriate. And it's a little bit different than what we normally do. But this is a story about Socrates. And the story goes that someone came up to Socrates and says, Hey, do you want to know what I heard about your friend? He said, All right, before you tell me, we'll give it the test of three sieves. And a sieve is basically a strainer that kind of sorts things out and gets, I guess, uh, sediment out of liquid and things like that. He's like, The first test is truth. Is it true? The person said, No, I just heard of it, so I, I'm not sure. And Socrates says, so you don't know, but maybe it'll pass the second test. The second test is kindness. Is it something good? No, quite the contrary, the person said. So Socrates says, so listen, so it's something negative, and you don't know if it's true. Let's see if it at least passes the third test of utility. Is it something useful for me to know? Uh, person said, no, not really. He's like, so it's neither true, nor good, nor useful then why did you want me to hear it in the first place? And this was, the story was more about gossip, but I think this can totally be applied to just our current lives and our situations. Too many times we hear something that sometimes is first, second, third, even fourth hand, and we hear it without doing any fact checking, without researching it, and we just go and spit it as the truth. Uh, but I know one thing I always talk about on this podcast is I'm always trying to make sure that the facts and everything I give are accurate. And I think as a society and as a country, it's something that we really should look more into because there's a lot of hate, a lot of misinformation about the recent events that are going on that just simply are not true and people are speculating and sometimes that speculation people are taking that and it's making it more oh this must be true i saw it on the internet is something people say a lot so just remember when you hear something uh whether it's gossip like socrates was talking about or just information about world events and and do anything do your research be educated be smart about it give it the test of three sieves and is it true is it useful and uh, basically is it kind and i think too many times we just get caught up into oh it must be true and, and we take that and that's how misinformation and and all that gets spread so hopefully that's something moving forward we can take away is this little story of Socrates and the test of the three sieves. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it useful? And be smart about things. Do the research. Just don't rely on what you see on Twitter or TikTok or what you hear your neighbor say or or somebody at the grocery store. Be smart about things and do your own research. And I think taking that, the, the Socrates test of three sieves, I think will go a long way in helping us become a better, just better people in general. All right, as I mentioned yesterday, we are in the dog days, so not a lot going on. Uh, I will be back in the home studio tomorrow, but probably much shorter podcast, and it's just one of those things that it's the time of the calendar. Uh, But Alec Boehm did put up a good fight yesterday in the home run derby, hit 21 in the first round, 16 in the second. It was a swing off, and truthfully, probably wouldn't have watched it if Alec Bone wasn't in it and I, I don't know if a lot of other people are like that it used to be when the big stars were in it it was kind of like a must-see tv but it probably would not have watched it but it was really cool to see him and just ha- he was having fun with it his teammates were there they were having fun uh, but a cool thing all-star game is tonight looking forward to that and then they get a few days off before they resume Friday I think that's out in Pittsburgh uh, but congrats to Bohm, who far exceeded his expectations for the home run derby yesterday. I'm telling you about Philly Goat. Go get the Cruck is My Spirit Animal shirt. 10% of those proceeds benefit the Battle Brothers Foundation. Check out the shoes. I can't tell you how much walking I've done the past few days. And wearing the Schmitties have just been phenomenal. So go check it out. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. 
promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. And be sure to check out my boys over at the Clash and Conferences podcast. They have their new baseball podcast out. Uh, they're doing great things over there. So be sure to check them out wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. Uh, more on the Sirianni interview. And when he talked about losing control of the offense, he's like, look, I can only control what I can control. But he's looking forward to it. He, he said, I, I can't make those decisions. It's not sometimes on me. I can just have to go out there and do what's best for the team. And I do think they, they put him in a kind of a bad spot with the way it went down. But I like him to rise above it. And, and I think the team's going to rally around him because they really do seem to like him. Um, so, I mean, it, it kind of is one of those things. It is what it is. But uh, it was really good to hear him talk and, and like, really address it. Uh, so looking forward to the, the Eagles season and training camp starting in one week. Um, I thought this was cool, too. Uh, Little Dicky was actually a big reason or, or part of the reason why Paul George chose to come to Philly. I guess in the video, he showed him what $3 million, which is, I guess, the price of Paul George's house in L.A., what $3 million gets you in Philly. Um, and Paul George mentioned it, so he was like, that's a selling point. And I'm like, I'll take that. That was pretty cool. Uh, Ricky Council still looks good in Summer League. Jarrett McCain is still struggling somewhat shooting, but he is slow, slightly improving each game, which is what you want to see and what you ask for. Uh, and Adem Bona just keeps flying around the court. I saw some of the highlights. He's just he's going to be fun to watch. Uh, but they are back at it again out in Vegas for Summer League. We'll continue to watch that because I want to see McCain become more consistent with his shots which he, he seems like he's starting to get there now. All right, today we're going to go back to 2009. And on this day in 2009, Phils beat the Marlins 4 nothing. Raul Banez hit two home runs, had three RBI. Jamie Moore went seven innings, gave up one hit, had four strikeouts. Ryan Howard hit a solo home run in the top of the six, and it was career home run for him, number 200. He became the fastest in Major League Baseball history to reach the 200 home run. Mark, the previous record was set by Ralph Kiner, who did it in 706 games, and uh, Howard did it in 686 games. And then by comparison, we just talked about Otani the other day, and he just hit his 200 and took him 794 games. Uh, but Howard has 382 home runs, number two on the all-time list. And I want to do a little bit of fun today. We are doing the tournament, but... A little bit of a bonus question of the day because I brought this up the other day in his matchup. But who is the most underrated, underappreciated athlete in Philly? Is it Ryan Howard or is it Donovan McNabb? Let me know your thoughts on that. 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Use that to get your, your thoughts on Ryan Howard versus Donovan McNabb. But who is the more underrated and underappreciated athlete in Philly? I think it's... I, I love Donovan, and I think he's very underappreciated and underrated, but I think it's hands down Ryan Howard is the most underrated and least appreciated athlete in Philly history. But let me know your thoughts. A little bit of a bonus question of the day. But on this day in 2009, Ryan Howard hit his 200th career home run, becoming the fastest in history ever to do it, breaking Ralph Kiner's record. Ironically enough, more on Ralph Kiner in a little bit. But it is time for the ultimate Philly sports nickname tournament. Tomorrow will be their last day of the second round, so the Sweet 16 matchups are getting set. And today, well, first, before we get into today's, let's recap yesterday's. And yesterday, very chalky, no surprises. Our two number one seeds won both with 80% of the votes. The execution of Bernard Hopkins is moving on as he beat the Wild Thing. Mitch Williams with 80% of the vote. And then out of the Schuylkill region, Concrete Charlie bashed Hollywood Hamels with 80% of the vote as well. So all number one seeds have moved on. The Executioner and Concrete Charlie both move on to the Sweet 16. All right, today's matchups, though. And in this first one, I'm just going to let the nicknames, and actually for all four of them, I'll let the nicknames do most of the talking for this because you know who these guys are. First, out of the Ben Franklin region, we have a Sixers matchup. The number two seed, the Boston Strangler, is taking on the number 10 seed, the Kangaroo Kid. The winner gets Smoking Joe in the Sweet 16, so looking forward to that. But first, the Boston Strangler, Andrew Tony, 
number eight pick in 1980 out of Louisiana, NBA champion in 83, and played a huge integral part of that championship run. He was a two-time All-Star, two-time Southland Player of the Year. He is a Philadelphia Sports Hall of Famer. And some little side notes that uh, I didn't mention the last time. Charles Barkley said, hands down, the best player he's ever played with. Larry Bird said he's one of two shooting guards that he was the most afraid of. Michael Jordan was the other. So that's pretty good company. And Larry Bird was known for his trash talk and not really showing any fear on the court. So if he's saying he was scared of him, that's how good Andrew Tony was. The Boston media gave him that nickname, the Boston Strangler, because of how well he played and just killed the Celtics in the playoffs back in the early 80s. Unfortunately for him, injuries cut short his career. Everyone talks about how he would have been a Hall of Famer had it not been for the injuries. But he is our number two seed out of the Ben Franklin region, the Boston Strangler, Andrew Tony, And he is taking on his coach, the Kangaroo Kid, Billy Cunningham. And Billy Cunningham was the number five overall pick out of UNC, played under Dean Smith. He was ACC Player of the Year in 1965, four-time All-Star in the NBA. He's on the All-NBA 50th and 75th anniversary teams. <coughs> Excuse me. He was the MVP in the ABA. He's on the all-time ABA team as well. His number 32 is retired by the Sixers. He's in the New York City Hall of Fame the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, as well as the NBA Hall of Fame as a player. Nickname originated because of his great leaping ability, but he was not done there. He also coached the Sixers to the 83 NBA championship, had his almost 70% winning percentage, won 454 games in his career, and one of a few handful of guys who have won two uh, championships in Philadelphia. Now, there's a lot of overlap from the 1948 and 49 Eagles, uh, but like big stars, I'm thinking. Like Greasy Neal obviously won two championships as the coach of that team. Uh, Steve Van Buren was the star running back. He's a Hall of Famer. Ben Narek was on the 49 team and the uh, 1960 team. And then Billy Cunningham won one as a player as a coach, and I can't think of anyone else minus, like I said, those role player guys. If you can think of anybody else who has won two championships in Philly, other than the Flyers, of course, um, let me know. Uh, but like NFL, NBA, and even Major League Baseball, like I can't really think of anybody else who who won two championships as, I mean, I guess you could say Ruben Amaro as an assistant GM, and I think he was the bat boy of the 1980 team, but that's getting very, very deep in the weeds there. But the number 10 seed, Kangaroo Kid, takes on the number two seed, the Boston Strangler, who is the better Philly sports nickname? Get your votes in now. Call 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Get that and anything else Philly sports related off your chest. Hit me up on social media, Jimbo underscore Mott, Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. But let me know who has the better Philly sports nickname. And then out of the cheesesteak region, this one, whew, I don't know how this is going to play out. But we have the number four seed, the round mound, the rebound. Taking on the number five seed, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Barkley. There's not much that we don't know about him. Obviously, he tried to sabotage uh, the Sixers from drafting him by going to eat the Grand Slams at Denny's, but did turn out to be one of the best Sixers of all time. Number five pick in the 84 draft, uh, known for just being outspoken. I am not a role model. That was one of the greatest uh, Nike ad campaigns of all time. Spent eight years in Philly, averaged 23 points, almost 12 rebounds. Got his nickname at Auburn due to his size and his ability to rebound. Uh, Six-time All-Star in Philly, uh, four-time NBA first team in Philly. His number 34 is in the rafters. He has some fun when he's on NBA on TNT. Going to miss him when he retires next year. Always fun to see him try to play golf. But Charles Barkley, one of the greatest Sixers of all time, and was traded away in one of the worst trades in Sixers and probably Philadelphia history when he was traded to the Suns, but it was one of those trades that needed to happen. Uh, he's on the NBA 50th and 75th anniversary teams, but again, a Philadelphia legend. Charles Barkley, the round-mounted rebound, is our number four seed. 
and then the number five seed Secretary of Defense, Gary Maddox, played for the Phillies from 75 to 86. Eight gold gloves, won the Roberto Clemente Award, which we talked about was very similar to the Walter Payton Man of the Year. He's in the Phillies Wall of Fame, world champion, five division titles, two pennants, uh, but he's known for his of defensive ability, and that is where the nickname came from. Ralph Kiner, who we just talked about, once said two-thirds of the earth is covered with water. The rest is covered by Gary Maddox and then Ray Dinninger of the Philadelphia Daily News. I think I forget whether he was a Daily News or Inquirer, but either way, he helped to, to grow that nickname for him. Uh, but wasn't a slouch at the plate, wasn't known for his power, but had 249 doubles and 42 triples and went nine straight years with stealing 20 bases. So he could do it all, but mostly he was known for his glove. Gary Maddox, the Secretary of Defense, is our five seed out of the cheesesteak region. But who do you got? Who has the best Philly sports? <coughs> Excuse me, this cold has killed me. Who's got the best Philly sports nickname? Is it Boston Strangler versus the Kangaroo Kid? The Round Mound of Rebound versus the Secretary of Defense? <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. But get those votes in. 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. While you're at it, let me know. Who's more underrated? Ryan Howard or Donovan McNabb, my vote goes to Howard, all because on this day in 2009, Phillies beat the Marlins 4-0, but Ryan Howard hit his 200th career home run, becoming the fastest to ever do that. <coughs> I apologize. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> so unprofessional. We'll have more on the All-Star game tomorrow. We'll have more on the Sixers Summer League. Hopefully we start getting some stories out of Eagles training camp, but be sure to get your votes in for the ultimate Philly sports nickname tournament. And as you go through your weeks, remember the story of Socrates and the test of the three sieves. Is what you're hearing true? Is it kind and is it useful? And that's what you got to figure out and be smart and do your own research. But this has been this day in Philly sports history for July 16th, 2024. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Tuesday, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.